السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ویلکم ٹو اور کلاس سو لاسٹ کلاس وی اسٹاپ ٹل ہیئر ڈفرنس بٹوین آرگینک مینیو اینڈ فرٹیلائزر ان دس کلاس وی ول اسٹارٹ فرام پروٹیکشن اف دا ہارویسٹ سو وین وی ہارویسٹ دا کراپس وی ہیو ٹو پروٹیکٹ اٹ فرام دا ولنربل انسیکٹس ویڈس اینڈ ادر ڈیزیزز سو کنٹرول آف ویڈس واٹ آر ویڈس Weeds are basically the unwanted or useless plants that grow between the our crops. Okay, so if they are there, then they will um, interpre- interrupt the growth of the crops. So they have to be controlled or removed. So these are some of the weeds that have to be uh, removed from the uh, field. Okay, so. they can be removed through flow or arrow method you can check the meaning for this so basically flow is the form is do it with the tractor and if the weeds grow again they can spray weedicides weedicides are basically some chemicals that kill particular weeds okay and control of crop pests and diseases so crops can be attacked by the pests pests are some insects and they can cause diseases so so the insect uh, pest attack plants in three ways they cut off the roots branches and leaves they suck the cellular fluids from various parts of the plants okay like in plants uh, i mean like in fruits or the grains or they make holes in the branches and the fruits okay so these insecticides or pesticides may be sprayed onto the plant so that this pest can be controlled and the next one is storage of grain so after we harvest the grain uh, crops and we get the grains we have to store it so that it does not go waste or it does not get some diseases or some infections or you know so uh, they have to be dried they have to be dried so that they do not have moisture in it so that they do not get pests or insects and my, by maintenance of storage vessels in the godowns sacks tanks or vessels these are some vessels they are used for the storage of the grain and they should not have any cracks or holes in them so that they are protected carefully and then chemical treatment some uh, chemicals like insecticides and fungicides they can be sprinkled so that they do not the crop or the grains do not get infected by the insects or fungus okay and also the, there are some organic cure you do not use chemicals but uh, some uh, organic uh, methods like keeping neem leaves or black pepper and oil so these are organic methods uh, to protect the crops and then vessels related to storage so there are some vessels you can read about here uh they are specific to um, save the or uh, store the grain okay and then next one is animal husbandry as we told in the beginning animal husbandry is growing of the farm animals you know for the production of eggs uh, milk meat all these things so this comes this is what is called as animal husbandry first one is milk animals so these are all the cattle from where humans can receive milk okay and also these animals that are helpful to farmers in agriculture work such as ploughing uh, irrigation and bearing loads okay so these are called milk animals uh, for example cow buffalo and all those things so today the animals are prone to a diseases so scientists are engaged in discovering how disease resistant capacity of milk animals can be enhanced and how their milk delivery period can be increased so scientists are working for this and then we have animal reproduction when we have the animal husband the we have to reproduce the animals so that the next generation will be formed and the farms can be um, continued okay so in order to get animals with certain desired characteristics in the offspring so what do they do with that they interbreed uh, interbreeding is 
one breed of animal is there and another breed of animal is there and both of them have certain special characteristics maybe one cow uh, gives more milk and another breed uh, another breed is strong okay so what do they do is that they interbreed these two so that the offspring may give more milk okay an artificial insemination is an important and effective method for obtaining a variety of desired characteristics artificial insemination is nothing but when they have a when they have a buffalo with special characteristics you know healthy and the cow gives more milk then they take out the semen and they inject it into the different cows uh, artificially so that is called as artificial insemination and the next one is poultry farming poultry is basically chicken okay like from poultry uh, eggs uh, and we get chicken meat so those hens uh, which lay the eggs they are grown for eggs only for eggs they are called as layers and if the chicken is grown for the for its meat then it will be called as broilers you could have uh, heard about this term okay so this is what is uh, poultry and even in poultry they have interbreeds uh, for eggs they uh, breed certain breeds so that they give good number of eggs and for broilers they <coughs> Uh, produce the breeds uh, that have much meat quantity okay more meat quantity so that is what they have mentioned here so they, these are the following factors that need to be kept in mind for rearing hens for better production of eggs and broilers so they have given different uh, factors you have to read this inshallah okay it's all easy you can read about this and the next one is fisheries and aquaculture you all know what is fisheries right fish we eat so it is the main so one of the uh, source of food one of the sources of food for humans so fish is a rich source of protein in our diet so there are two kinds fish or uh, is found in two kinds of water one is sea water and fresh water uh, fresh water is rivers and ponds and lakes and uh, Uh, sea water is, you know, in the sea water fishes. So the marine fisheries, uh, the fish that are uh, that are caught, the catching of fish from the ocean or the sea. That is even in Bangalore you can see it is marine fisheries. So in today, with the help of new techniques like satellites and eco mission. uh in the in the sea they can find where the fish are concentrated okay so they can go there and catch it so to protect the marine uh, culture that is to protect them from oil leakage from the ship and to not to um, uh over catching the fish so they do all these things okay uh, for the marine culture preservation next one is inland fisheries inland fisheries is basically fishing from the rivers ponds and lakes and all those things and the next one is biotechnology in agriculture so what is biotechnology biotechnology is the plant cells are taken and they are grown uh, in the laboratory uh in a suitable condition then they are transferred to the fields with certain characteristics so that is what is called as biotechnology so in agriculture biotechnology can be of two types first one is tissue or cellular culture and second one is genetic engineering in the tissue culture the plant cells and tissues are separated they are cultured in newton media uh, media is a medium in which the plants can grow the plant cells can grow in test tubes and beakers in the lab so plants are grown like this then they are transferred to the field 
so that is the tissue or cellular culture next one is genetic engineering so genetic engineering the transfer of specific gene or dna we saw in the previous chapter about gene and dna so they transfer a particular gene or dna from a plant into a different plant so that the plant can have a special characteristics so such plants are called as transgenic plants and uh, they are called as genetically modified vegetables okay or fruits the next one is food security food security is defined as the timely and convenient availability of food humans they should have the timely availability of food uh, okay and it should be for all the people of a particular region or country that is what is called as food security so people should not be suffering without food so the government should take measures and take some action so that people get food without any difficulties so food security is dependent upon the following factors first one is availability of the food the food should be available so they should take necessary steps so that the food is available most of the time or all the time imagine that people are not doing agriculture what will happen the food will not be available so the government should take care that the food should be available and access to food food is available but it should be access to the people imagine the people cannot get the food easily they have to travel long distance so the people should have access to the food okay and next one is capacity to bear food expenses imagine the food sir high but people have very less money how can they buy it so the government should take care of the cost of the food so that the people have the capacity to buy the foods okay the food security can be established in a country only if three conditions are there one is when enough food is available for people that is availability and when all people have enough purchasing capacity to buy nutritious food that is this one the capacity to bear food expenses and third one is when there is no obstacle in procuring food that is access to the food to get the food they should not have any obstacles <coughs> so a large population of a country uh, uh, are facing insecurity related to food and nutrition which you may know okay so uh there were effects that were made in the country for self reliance in food security so that is green revolution and all those things you can read about it here okay and the next one is buffer stocks buffer stocks are those stock of grain grains that are obtained by the government through the food medium of food council of india so the government obtains the food grains through this food council of india so wheat and rice are the major uh, consumed foods in india so they are the buffer stock uh, so the indian food council they buy wheat and rice from the farmer uh, where they are grown in surplus surplus is they are grown more so the government buys from these people um, and they stock it so that it can be used for the, uh, in the future so then the farmers will be paid for the uh, grains they give it to the government so that is called as minimum support price then the public distribution system the foods are obtained but now it should be given to the people uh, so the foods are distributed to the people through the ration shops and this is known as public distribution mechanism okay and you should know uh, uh, in your house uh, for the ration card how many kgs of rice or uh, sugar or other grains the government gives you know it differs from state to state so all of you should know how much the government gives to your family every month okay so we have completed this lesson so as you feel you have to write the in text questions answers and this should be the notes you have to write it and send me the photograph what you have learned this this section till here okay till here you have to write the notes and send it to me you have marks for the notes so please follow that and you also have to mark the answers for the terminal exercise 
okay so we have completed this lesson inshallah in the next class we will go to the uh, next chapter inshallah we will see it uh, dear students once again i am instructing you uh, since we have to complete many lessons and we have very less time i am only covering the main uh, important uh, explanation it doesn't mean that you can skip the parts which i did not explain for example i told you to study um, uh, this one the the following factors okay yourself since i told you to uh, study yourself it doesn't mean that it's not important okay everything is important you have to study it okay i i told you to study this yourself because it is easy to understand uh, and if you have any doubts you can message me any time inshallah through whatsapp so we will see study hard work hard so that you can get good marks in the your public examination see you all assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh